Hey, what's going on everybody? I wanted to do a video on uh, boot shoes, handkerchiefs, and rope. I just briefly went over handkerchiefs in one video, but I want to go over them again. Um, a little bit more detail about what you can do with them. Um, but uh, but uh, ropes and shoes is primarily. Um, I'm going to try to stay out of the light. My light's been giving me issues um, for the past, uh, there it goes, a little bit better light. I think I broke the thing. Okay, um, boots and shoes. I haven't seen a lot of videos on these at all. Um, something that I've thought about a lot because I've worked outside so much before I was a diesel mechanic. I worked construction and I did a lot of concrete. I was outside pulling concrete blankets over in the snow and the ice and having to scrape off uh, top plates off frame when I was a framer with uh, shovels so I wouldn't slip on the ice. So I've been outside. I've, I've worked in the outdoors. And so footwear is pretty important. There's two things I always think of them that makes your day really bad and one of them is sore or painful feet. And you don't want to have painful feet after walking a whole lot. Um... But there's there's a bunch of bunch of problems with footwear. What time of year are you gonna be? Or are you planning on bugging out? Or or when it bugs out, are are you have you packed for? Um, or have you prepped for? Uh, are you gonna bring two pair? Are you gonna bring the shoes that you're wearing? My sneakers. Are they gonna be good enough? Is two pair of shoes too much? Um, something to think about. Um, right here I have a pair of Tevas. These are some Tevas. Um, they're the... Yeah, Teva. They're the plastic and, and, and whatever you call it, uh, uh, sandals. I use these when I go out fishing or when I'm out, uh, when it's really hot and I'm doing stuff. I don't mind having Tevas on. These are my, oh, some of my work shoes, one pair of my work shoes. These are called uh, English Setters. I don't know if you can see it or not. These are made by Red Wing. These are Rockies. Get a better shot in the light. These are Rockies. These are my uh, heavy winter boots, hunting boots. And then I have Danners. Of course, you can't fail with Danners. Um, these are all heavy-duty, expensive shoes except for of course the Tevas but they're expensive as well something to think about um, when it comes to this is if shit has to fan in the summertime we're not going to be really prepared for for winter six four months come around where our feet are going to be cold springtime fall time winter time but summertime they're going to still work but when you're, if anybody's ever walked in a river, you don't want to have these on your feet. And you're not going to go barefoot. These are, these are really good. Your work shoes, you can get like uh, Cabela brand or uh, Columbia. If you have a chance to get Red Wings, I advise them. Red Wings, if anybody hasn't heard of Red Wing, you go into the store and the people actually work there. All they sell are shoes. You actually stand on a machine. They size your foot. These are... 11 and a half extra wide so they actually fit my foot perfect best shoes I've ever owned they also sell different inserts so I won't get into the inserts but if you're interested in a pair of shoes they're the best I've I've ever bought I'm really happy with Red Wings but anyways Danners of course are everybody's favorite these are a perfect boot so what do you pack it's a good question. I I don't know. I plan on maybe bringing my Tevas along. Because there will be a time when I'm drying out my shoes or my boots or something like that. Or my ankle swells up. I'll want something in addition. They're light. $70 though. $130. $140. $150. $180. $190. Everything's expensive. How can I go without bringing my Danners? I don't know. Something to think about if you're out there. 
think about what kind of shoes you want to pack, what kind of uh, situation. I always try to bring up, imagine the day of the year that you do not want to go outside and do anything. It looks terrible. It's mucky. It's dreary. It's gloomy. That's the day you're going to be running out the door. So plan for that day. I have here a duffel bag. Um, my earlier video I did one on clothing. And also wanted to point out, I didn't bring into that video, is that when it comes to clothing, there's clothes that I have packed away that are one of those little space age vacuum bags that I have in just a random duffel bag. It will sit next to my bug out bag, then my duffel bag. I have planned on putting the clothes that I want to wear that I've gone over that will be the only clear clothes you'll have for the rest of your life. And inside that bag, I'm going to put my shoes as well. I'll make it look all nice and neat. That way, one of the problems I've seen with a lot of videos is they have a really pimped out bag. Oh man, my bag's got all this cool shit. It's got fucking crackers and everything, but they don't have their shoes. They don't have their their vest. So you put this bag next to your bug out bag. Put your bug out bag on. Put the clothes you're going to be wearing that you want to wear in the survival situation, the uh, run for your life type situation in the duffel bag. When you get to a place you can change and just throw this bag away. Thought I'd bring that up as a good idea. Okay. Uh, we'll go over handkerchiefs really quick because they're kind of in the way. Oh, also little drive bags. So you can buy these on eBay too. And put a pair of socks, two pair of socks and two pair of underwear in one of those drive bags. And uh, throw them in your duffel bag as well. That way um, you have uh, a change of clothes or something when you get to a spot too. And then you have your clean clothes that you can also change into. Something to think about. Um, handkerchiefs. It's uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about handkerchiefs. Not a lot, pardon me, some. Some people talk about bringing their black handkerchief. Or camouflage. You got your choice of camouflage too. There's some camouflage handkerchiefs. Here's some white ones. Here's so here's like a gray one and another kind of camouflage. Kind of defeats the purpose of having camouflage or black handkerchief, and I'll say why. Because if you rely on your handkerchief being your camouflage, then you're humped. You probably already have. A set of camouflage already that you're going to be wearing. Don't make your your handkerchief something that's camouflaged as well. I advise make it something that's visible. Something that you can see if you're waving at Yuhu over here, they can see you. Um, also with a handkerchief, people say, well, I could use it when it's all trifolded. I should have had this trifolded before here. Pause. And once it's trifolded, you can put it around your face, like a bandit. You got to be a really small person to do that. This won't fit my face. If I try to tie a knot around the back of my head with that and try to put it around my nose, it'd smush my nose. I'd have trouble breathing. I'm not huge. I'm six foot two, six foot two in the morning, six foot one in the afternoon. Um, 240 something pounds so I'm not enormous this thing won't fit me um, also it wouldn't work as a sling because it's a little on the small side um, so I have a couple ideas I wanted to bring up and I'll put these here so hopefully the light isn't too terrible I'll get on this side a little bit of light um, an idea for a handkerchief, this one doesn't need to be in there, is if you can go to like a cloth, uh, a craft store or something like that, one of those fabric stores, find yourself a piece of fabric 
that is a color or a pattern that you like. This is an old uh, army one. And it is just like a sheet from like a bed or something like that. And you can have the people there cut it whatever size you want. It's only one-sided. But you can get like some kind of weird pot leaves if you're into that shit or if you're into like, um, I don't know, G.I. Joe or something. I don't care. And then you can get yourself like a uh, your own personalized kind of handkerchief. Also, you can get it bigger so that it would fit your face. If you're going to buy, if you're going to carry another handkerchief, some ideas to get are something that's kind of uh, has a little bit of sentimental value. This is an old Smokey the Bear one. Old, old Smokey the Bear. And that one's really neat. It's an old forest service handkerchief, and it'll kind of bring back, it's part of that morale thing I talk about, which I'll do a video on later. And you have like some kind of part of your past or, or something that reminds you of doing stuff. Colored ones, they're really cheap, but the colored ones are something that you can see when you're waving to somebody. And uh, they're, uh, you can find these at like truck stops or, or gas stations. They're pretty cheap. And there's something that if it gets ruined, if you have something that you don't have a lot of sentimental value to, if it gets ruined, you can throw it away and not feel too bad about I prefer orange. I always carry orange with me whenever I'm out actually doing stuff. This is the one that I actually carry with me when I'm out doing stuff. And this is the one that I have in my bag. I'm going to pause it again. You can tell how much truly bigger it is than a regular standard handkerchief. Two inches, two inches, two inches all the way around. Now when this one is folded, it could fit around your face. It could work as a sling. They're called survival bandanas. You can find them on Amazon. And there's red, there's yellow, there's other colors. But they give you little little things to read. A little hiking safety, a little fighting North Star kind of shit. How to tie knots. Not that you actually need this kind of information. If you need this kind of information, you might want to do some more research before you plan on making your bag. But it keeps something to occupy your mind. While you're out doing stuff, you can look at something while you're sitting there cold and stuff, and think, oh yeah, a mountain lion, burka durka durka. It just gives you something to read. Kind of lightens the mood. And when it is tri-folded, it's pretty big. Lastly, I want to bring up this handkerchief. This is a really good idea, I think. This is the other one that I'm going to bring with me. Um, you can find these still on eBay. They're cheap. You probably find uh, you probably find them for a dollar plus shipping. It's an old Cub Scouts handkerchief. It's the thing that we used to wear around our neck. It folds into a square if you want it to. But it's triangular shaped. Look at that. They made these when we were in Cub Scouts on purpose to be huge to wrap around our necks. But they also made them to work as slings if you hurt your arm. Um, also, it's a bright color. You can see this if somebody's waving this. Not as bright as the orange. And uh, you can still fold them up and blow your nose if that's what you want to do with them. Just some ideas for some handkerchiefs. And now I'm going to go over rope. Um, there's these buckets out there. They have these, these lids. They have these little closures on them. And they, they close like this. And then you open this by moving this. And you can undo the lid. I keep some rope in there. This is that whatever it is, inch, nylon rope. And I keep that in there. It keeps it uh, secure, clean, and it keeps it coiled. Um, it's an idea if you can get yourself a bucket, you can put a good 100 feet, that's 100 feet of rope in there, and that's a really strong stuff that could tow a truck. Um, it's an idea, and then you have yourself a bucket that you always know where your rope is. The... Uh, 
cheap stuff that you can find at like Home Depot where it says do not use as climbing for climbing. I have. I actually hung off a roof once with it because I was doing some work. It was stupid, but it held me. Now I'm not saying go do it. But if you want to buy some if you buy some rope, go test it out. Go go tie it around a tree and lean back on it. See how it works. This stuff is really good. You can use it in your hand. You can hold on to it. Um, it's cheap and you can find a hundred foot of it for like fifteen dollars or something. Paracord, we all go over paracord. This I bought at Cabela's. And I cannot remember the name of it, I apologize. But it's stronger than the paracord. It's stronger than the... This is quarter inch rope. Stronger than the three eighths. That's 90 feet right there. I made this shoulder bag. Don't know if you can see it. And on it, I have rope tied onto the bottom of it. So I always have some rope whenever I'm out with the dogs. Uh, Cabela's made this. It's really strong rope. It's stronger than the ones that I've mentioned so far. Probably not as strong as that, but look how small it is. Quarter inch. I'll find out the name of it. I'll put it on the description. But that stuff I could, I, I would hang off a, off, a, off a hill grabbing onto somebody. Easy. I might not like go all Stallone and cliffhanger and shit with it, but I would definitely try pulling something up a tree with it. Um, this bag is what I keep in my truck, and this is one of the things I want to go over. It's just a cheap shoulder bag, messenger style bag. I've taken the shoulder strap and I've wrapped it around it to make it tighter. And then when you undo it here, I want to do all this with one hand, hopefully. All right. Once it's undone, then you can hook, of course, hook it back up and use this shoulder bag. Added some leather, and I put a steel carabiner on here. Make sure I got that undone right. And I want to go over carabiners really quick, too. Right there, it's on the front. Inside the bag, I have... A lanyard. I have my belt, my gloves, and then my rope. Inside this whole bag, you can keep the things to actually use to like pull somebody or or whatever uses you have. If you need to climb up some rocks, just in one bag. This bag devoted to climbing. These gloves are some Western safety. I think they're just cheap gloves that you can find at Home Depot. But they're leather uh, 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 palmed, and they're good for so you don't hurt your hands. They also, you know, you can also have your leather gloves, of course. I advise keeping gloves with your rope. And if you have your bug out bag, I advise some kind of rope type glove, if anything. The belt is made by Blackhawk, and there's other generic versions of it. But what it does is it has this Velcro that once it goes through the loops, it backs upon itself and then it Velcros on itself through the buckle. But behind the buckle it has this Velcro thing. And it has like a little D beaner or whatever you call this part on it. Hooks into your belt loops. Of course it's not for repelling. But if you need to latch onto something, I wouldn't think twice about it. If it slides up, if your pants uh, pull up to your groin and pinch your nads or, or your vag, fine. You're safe. You know, if you're falling off of something, you're fine. Your nads and vag will, will heal. And if your belt loops break, then it'll go around your arms. You know, you'll get pulled out of a river with this thing. The lanyard's tricked out. Let's see if I can find my... Uh, here it is. You got your carabiner. What you can do is this lanyard, so once it's hooked in, is it's elastic. And this is rated. This is sold by Blackhawk as well. It is rated for climbing. And it stretches, and I'll put my knee up against it here. 
and it'll, it will extend. Once that's hooked onto your belt, and you have another beaner on there. Let's see here, Let's get this one off. I'm going to go over that. That's such a problem. Uh, now you got yourself an actual setup. Wrap around a tree limb or something like that. And then you could pull somebody out of the water. And then you yourself have something secure. You can lean out of a truck. Something like that. Whatever your imagination. You can hook onto a spaceship. Something to think about. This is something I'm going to bring. This is going to be my bug out belt. And I'm taking my lanyard and two carabiners with me. Now, the problem with this is with carabiners, I want to bring up. A buddy of mine from work, Toby, told me about this. He brought it up, and he was right. Is that the ones are these safety ones where you have to spin them. To lock in place. They, they suck. Because you can't ever get them if they're a little bit spun tight they they won't open up and if you really need to open this thing up you're gonna have to spin which way is which and you're hesitating it's taking too much time I hate them I don't know why they exist they sell like all over if you're like I said if you're actually repelling and stuff maybe that's a good idea but just for a bug out bag for your survival bag I highly advise not getting a locking carabiner get a regular carabiner get a regular D carabiner get a rated one they're not that expensive you can get them this is an Omega that's an Omega this is rated for climbing this is a real one they also have two different styles uh, you have steel and aluminum steel lasts longer it doesn't get the wear as aluminum aluminum's lighter they both have the same strength, approximately, if you get them the right, same strength rated. They're about the same. But steel will not uh, get the wear and tear like aluminum. Aluminum will wear out. It has too much friction and, and, and work on them. Since I'm not a professional rock climber, since I'm not going to be doing uh, uh, that kind of stuff, yeah, I'm taking aluminum. Aluminum, Omega... D shaped carabiners. I'm going to take two of them. I got another one on my bag over there. You can see it. Take two of these. Take sandpaper. Take the shine off of it. And it looks like that. I took the shine off of it and I added some gun bluer, and now it's a dull colored carabiner. All right. Then, lastly, I was going to go over, there's other different types of rope. Another way to carry your rope is an old sleeping bag cover, if you have it. This is my actual climbing rope. This is the stuff that is rated for actual climbing. It's 150 feet in there. This is the thing that we all would love to be able to take with us. There's no way. It must weigh 15 pounds. Unless that's what you plan on doing, scaling rock cliffs. I advise not to do it. What I have in this bag is um, it's not rated for climbing, but it's five eighths, I think it is, rope. You can find this at your Army Navy store. There's 120 feet in this bag. And this shit is awesome. I have climbed with this, I've hung off a tree with this. Um, I haven't climbed like a, a vertical. I've actually wrapped it around a tree and climbed up some wild chucker hunting. It's great. It works. It does everything I want. And I can collapse it into a pretty small uh, compactable. That's actually something that I would consider taking with me. The quarter inch is good. Just kind of too thin for the hand. If somebody's going to buy rope... And you want to take rope with you on your in your bug out bag? I advise you find a tree, throw 
one end over the limb double it up and then just hang on to it try to like let go with your weight and try to hold on to that rope if it hurts your hands it's too small a rope if it breaks obviously it's junk but if it doesn't terribly hurt your hand something worth considering um, last thing I want to go over because of course this is my left side adventure bag I've gone over that in another video but inside it I made a new invention since I made the video I have what I take with me when I'm out just doing my adventures I have 50 feet of mule tape and I've talked about mule tape before but if anybody hasn't heard about it mule tape is thin and it's stronger than everything else other than the climbing I don't know why it's strong I don't know why it's called mule tape I just know that it's just stronger than this than this than this than that it's the strongest rope there is you can tow a car with this little teeny stuff I put it inside this mesh bag I put one end down here and I tied it off with like a cardboard thread it's really really weak it gets wet and it'll dissolve one whole end my light just went out and then I stuffed it stuffed it stuffed it stuffed it and then I took one other end and I tied it off with orange that way I can find it easily I know where the end is so I grab the end and then I hold it with my left hand then I can throw the whole bag like a throw bag like when you're rafting and then the bag will unfurl the rope itself. If you're going to get anything, get mule tape. You can find it on Amazon. I thought I'd turn it off. All right. That's it for this one. This was boots, handkerchiefs, and rope ideas. Of course, I'm not an expert on anything. I'm a copycat. A lot of this stuff I picked up from friends, from coworkers, stuff like that. And if anybody else has a better idea, I'd love to hear it. Uh, give me your comments, your criticism. I take criticism. If you just want to say you suck, do it. Um, and if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will answer it and help you out the best that I can. Um, anyways, uh, have a good one out there, everybody. Bye.